warning, this podcast contains spoilers. What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the As Seen on TV podcast for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 17, Identity and Change. I'm your host, Mike, and joining me is Madam Hydra. <laughs> Dan Cleo. Also, Jake, behind the Madam Hydra. Oh, hey, hey, guys. Hi. Madam Hydra and the Winter Soldier. <laughs> we got you. I drew, I, I drew that just now. So, oh, not bad. That's very quick. Good. Inspiration of this of this episode. I, I didn't get her. I didn't get like a lot, a lot of things right because you know what? I, there's a giant squid head on this one. You know we don't have that uh, in this episode. Not yet, anyways. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. But not she's yet. Got the no. green hair going. She does the have the hair going. Bottoms of it. So they um. Yeah, that was the whole theory last episode. We talked about Jake brought it up. Like he called her madam. And mm. you know what? This episode, they just threw pretense to the fucking wind. Yeah. And just like, that's Madam Hydra. See, I, so I would just like to acknowledge that I called something for once correctly. <laughs> you did. And, it was just, and, it, and to be honest, it was actually a crack theory that was like, and this was like um, when we were still on the, um, the Ghost Rider arc. I'm like, maybe Ada's Madam Hydra. No, and I'm like, no, she's not Madam Hydra. But they did it. They did it. And she is. So, um... This episode's got me all kinds of fucked. Yeah. Episodes that do things to Fitz and make me feel things for him have me all kinds of fucked. And that was this one. That's for sure. That was... <laughs> big time for sure. Anyway, we got to see Mac, finally. In the oh, framework. Yay. How have you been doing, Mac? Mac is a really, really chill, mechanically abled dad with a sassy and awesome, equally, if not better, mechanically abled daughter. She is awesome. If they don't find a way to make her real and She's bring dead. her... She is dead. Shh, shh. You're not listening to me. If they don't find a way to make her real and bring her from the framework into the re- into reality, I'm upset. Uh, I don't know if they can do that. Hold on, uh, hold on. Let's let's analyze this because Ada, Ophelia, Madame Hydra has Fitz working on the Looking Glass project, which presumably can take you from the framework to reality. Can if if she wants, because her it seems like her goal is she wants to be a real real girl, a real real boy. She doesn't want to be a Pinocchio anymore. So if she can somehow cross through this barrier and come out on in the real world with a, with the people body, with the people body, with the people body, that's a word. Can, uh, this, can this happen to this tiny child that I love so much? I think what she's trying to do, really, she has them working on this project, Looking Glass. I think she's trying to get out. I, I'm under the impression she can leave the framework at any point. <laughs> Being she's kind of in control of it. What I think she's trying to do is make it so that Fitz's framework personality comes out of the framework oh. when she unplugs him. Because yeah. she like has for... total lady boner for him. Mm. Yeah, and it's like uh, it's gross. It's gross. It's gross. It is very gross. She is like head over, like, like you know. <clears throat> she developed feelings. She is the android who loves, and she loves Fitz. But she does have feelings. Is it? We, uh, we just, well, we don't know. Are I mean, I real? guess, like, I, I'm i going to assume that she's, like, starting to, you know, grow feelings. Because, um, at least in this reality, maybe not so much in, like, real reality. Mm-hmm. But I don't think uh, hope can come through because I think that's kind of a cop out because mm-hmm. I mean the whole point of the framework is to get rid of your regrets whatever they may be and um, I guess Mac Max is um, hope I guess so the thing and the thing about you know regrets is that um, they are a part of you and they impact your life and you learn from them so to take that away 
at least in the real world, I think that's kind of detrimental to Max's character. Yeah. So, I've been thinking about this a lot. She is really cool, and I love her. But, last episode, you know, they brought up, that being it was the first one back from the break, the whole how all their regrets were taken away and the world is radically different. If you think about it, this is like the changing of six or seven minor events and creating one hell of a butterfly effect cascade going out. It's almost like Barry went back in time and fucked up the timeline. Right, but I mean, they remove, you know, they changed key people because you think about it, these guys have been saving the world silently under the radar for the last three seasons. Mm -hmm. So if they were in a different place at that time, like, here is the major one. May's regret... Bahrain. Yeah. So that's removed. The little girl survives. It is at that point that the timeline diverges. And the way it majorly diverges is that girl was an inhuman. And she killed a whole bunch of people at Cambridge. And inhumans came out to the public before the events, I would say, technically, of the Winter Soldier, it would seem. Yeah, because it it gave Hydra the power to take over without any resistance. Right. Without Which any also, where's Captain America? I am going to imagine he's dead. Fuck that. I or agree. he's not. Or he's not Captain America. No, or... I, none of those. The events. Or they be... never found him. No, I think the events up until May saving that little girl are synchronous, linear, because Ada programmed the world off of the real world, or Radcliffe did when he started. Yeah. Is that? But I think that's before they found Captain America in the ice. <laughs> No. Wait. Yes. No, it was Bahrain before they found him in the yes, ice. Yes, it was. It Ooh. was six years Ooh. before the show started, which is would have been before they found Steve in the ice. You're right. So they may have never found him. You're right. And um, I am going to, and because we can do this, and you know, and the show is never going to disprove this. At least I don't think so. I'm just <laughs> going to assume Peggy. Peggy is alive and well in this new world, kicking ass somewhere else mm-hmm. that's With not Alzheimer's. here. Because, no, 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 no. She's fine. She's, she's perfectly fine. fine. She's perfectly fine. And this is, and I think, um, uh, well, I, at least I hope that. I, Ada wouldn't put Peggy in the framework. She just wouldn't. But I'm just going to assume that uh, she did because I need my baby back. Um, and like we could, we could have just a small little cameo. Can we have that, please? Here she is. Like they're twins. Um, twins. And here's Steve. Oh look, they go together. Look at that. Uh, aren't they a nice I couple? A, I have we... a different Steve. <laughs> well, I have. This is the civil. This is the civil war, for Steve. So oh, okay. the, the, look, the, this, this is nice. You guys. Marvel. This is nice. See this? Weird. This is nice. This is functional. We're going to count how many Captain Americas I have on my desk. We're going to, for the very first time, take (laughs) take this out of the box here. Oh, it's only three. I'm upset. It's only three. (laughs) So I'm going to see your Steve Rogers multiple versions and Peggy Uh Carter and raise you Yellow Jacket. Oh, nice. Because that is the only Marvel vinyl I have over here. That that doesn't fit into this universe. It might, but... Almost all the vinyls I have on this table are Marvel. <laughs> Where's my Daredevil? I still need. I still need my Agents of Shield. Uh, I have. The only ones I have in reach are Yellow Jacket and Farah. Oh, I'm nice! Overwatch. My Farah's so. downstairs. Well, the only the only other one that I have in reach isn't a Marvel one. <laughs> no, it's um, it's so, a, it's a, Agatha, my weeping angel. I'm going to put him back away until I figure out what the hell to do with him. Now that I can't get him back in the box. Ah, I keep that breaking idea, Logan's Bad plan. motorcycle. That, that's a terrible thing to do. Get Mac to fix it. Um, anyway. I'm just fascinated by the alternate... I, I don't know why I like these alternate timeline event yep. things so much. Where like, are the other Avengers? Because um, there were other heroes that existed before Captain America. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, and, before, well, before you know, post-war Captain America. And you know what? There was the original Ant-Man. There's Hank Pym. Yes. And right. Like, where are so they? They did mention the incident in this alternate universe, in, in the framework, and nobody's dead. Like, you know, the world isn't destroyed, leveled. The aliens have not taken over. So, 
clearly someone was around to combat them at the, the Chitauri during the incident. Mm, that's good. So, um, well, good I guess Thor could, I guess, potentially, well, Thor still exists. Whether or not he came to Earth, we don't know. Anyway, we're diving down a crazy rabbit hole. Yeah. Project Looking Glass. All that stuff. Point is, Ada Point fucked is, a lot of stuff. Ada has fucked a lot of stuff up. No, she didn't. She changed only, she said, she only changed the thing that they regret most. Whatever happened beyond that was that out of her control. Her. I don't think she's telling the truth because Radcliffe sort of tries to call her out. And so yeah, you've, been you've been meddling with stuff. I I think she's she's put her fingers in more than she wants to admit. Oh, oh you put your you, you did put your fingers in things. Oh uh, no, why? Uh. Anyway. Ow. Anyway. They find Radcliffe on an island east of Bermuda, an island that should not exist. So that's probably a way Ada was meddling. It's like, hey, guess what? Here's a nice paradise island that shouldn't exist. And its all inhabitants are Radcliffe trying to figure out a croquet mallet in the most awkward way imaginable. And a very, very confused Agnes. Who I feel really bad for. Oh, Agnes. Agnes. Mm -hmm. Agnes. Agnes. So, I mean, Radcliffe is trying to dig into fit, you know, get through to Fitz. Like, yeah. you know, you were a good guy. We were best buds. We watched football. We knocked down a pint or six. We did all these things. You helped me design Ada. Didn't like the whole reason she's freaking out is because I'm right and she doesn't want you to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Which, for someone as intelligent as Fitz, should have been the gigantic red flag. <laughs> like, yeah, she really is overly upset about all of this. Why? Well, I think he loves her. I think you got to look at it too. She's claiming that he, imp you know, right. imprisoned her, forced her to do all this stuff. That's pretty serious stuff. Very true. She's you know not a hundred percent wrong about. No, she twisted a little. Of her, course, you know, did. to make it. Yeah, you know, she's right. Reality. You're right. She's not a hundred percent wrong or erroneous. She's just embellishing the truth a little bit. I mean. From an emergent AI standpoint, all everything she said is true. Like, every, word for word. And this goes into multiple different sci-fi things. And it's fresh in my head because I've been playing Mass Effect a lot lately. So, and, and that's a recurring topic of all the Mass Effect games. So, yeah. I mean, it's a sellable story. And I just, I don't know why I didn't think of that two seconds ago. <laughs> yep. Anyway. Uh, moving on. Mace. Oh, yeah. Director Mace. Oh, oh yeah, he's got a hey, he's gotta scrub. Oh, my God. I like God. it. I love it. And he is, he is the inhuman leader of the Resistance, also known as the Patriot. And Colson Question. is, uh, he's, a, he's a geek and owl. Oh, no, I'm gonna get, I am saving time <laughs> for Colson. <laughs> he is coming. Mace, however, actual inhuman in the framework? Or just I, the same ruse? I don't know. If he wasn't inhuman in the real world, I don't think he is in this world. But there's the other question I think I've brought up before. Has Mace ever been exposed to Terrigen Mist? I think they, I think he was. Because like, hmm. I don't think... We check, did we? We, ne we no, never did, but... Uh, terrible. No, but I would assume that he was if... Because, like, if you wanted an Inhuman, you know, for, um, as a face shield, wouldn't you, like, use an actual one? So, like, I would assume they would test everybody. Yeah. And they, and they have a way to test Terrigen Mist without killing people now. So, it right, wouldn't hurt. Because, yeah, they separated it from the, uh, what was it? I forget the name of the device in Season 2. The golden uh, thing that stones people. The Diviner, yes. They separated it out from the metal. But so I'm just going to assume he wasn't an inhuman. Like they tried it, it didn't work. But they're like, uh, you're kind of a charming guy anyway. So like, here, here's it. Here, here's this. We like you. Serum. Here's this serum that you know it's, it's perfectly fine. Don't worry. <laughs> 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 we just took it from this oh, crazy God. ass dude. 
Yeah. And and I said it before, but my favorite thing was how they reacted when Talbot told them it was part of the Hyde serum. They were like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, it was my exact reaction. I was like, oh my god. It's like, really, guys? Really, we Talbot? Altered it some. Yeah, sure, it you altered fine. it. fine. No, you it's removed... okay. We took the peppermint out. It's I was fine. just going to say that. <laughs> we removed the peppermint. I forgot about the peppermint. <laughs> Anabolic See, it bit, steroids. It was, a bit, it was a bit spicy, so they needed to take it out, and that's all the problem was. Anabolic steroids, human growth hormone, gorilla testosterone, and I kid you not, a touch of peppermint. Like, yeah, no, do not take that. Even with the peppermint, even without it, don't take it either way. It's bad for you. I mean, no, the peppermint was just, that's the only problem. You take it out. It's fine. I, See, it's working. It's working. I apologize for my randomness, but Colson was mentioned, and I've been too distracted by that. To concentrate on anything mm -hmm. but Coulson. Because at the end of last episode, he looks in the mirror at Sky and he's just like, Daisy? Yeah. And he's like, you broke through to him, congratulations! Not enough. Well, like, it, really not, not enough. But It was enough to get him on their side, and that's really all they yes. need until they can get everybody out. So Coulson... The teacher, who seems to toe the party line, calls Hydra on suspected subversives and all that stuff, is a fucking conspiracy nut. Tinfoil hat. I swear to God, there's one in his room. I feel like he already was. Think about it. If anyone yeah. was going to go crazy and be like a conspiracy theory nut, it was Coulson. It's because of the soap. The mind control <laughs> soap. The soap. The anti-mind control soap. I live because alone and I make soap. It's like he makes soap and, and it's just you know, like to, to really? counteract the brainwashing. <laughs> the blue soap. Oh my god. I'm I sorry. like that it... that sort of stuff manifested itself from from uh, the project Tahiti. I think that was great. Now, if a government agency of questionable origin was the one that delivered soap to the entire world, I too would not use it. No. Yeah, I don't blame him. Like, if suddenly, you know, all of the soap in the supermarket shelves got replaced with officially sanctioned CIA soap. <laughs> think about that just for a second. If the CIA, CIA supplied your soap, would you use it? Almost, I'm sad that if it was cheap. I'm sad that April Fool's has passed because I would have replaced all the soap on my store's shelf with CIA soap. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe gotten fired would have been worth it. <laughs> would have been worth it. Okay, anyway. I love Coulson. Okay, I just good. love him. So when he gets out of the framework, he needs to start making uh, this soap. soap. And then sell it on Etsy or shield something. Soap. Yeah. yeah, some shield oh, soap. No, no, no. Captain America soap. Oh no, no, yes. it's gonna be also a little event a little event yes. a little logo to be on the soap. It's gonna be it's gonna be like those those bath bombs that have a toy inside. So when you throw them oh in the bath, you, you get a you get a, you get a little tiny little Captain America. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Sorry. You just brought up a good point when he gets out of there. And it was mentioned a number of episodes ago. Seems like forever ago, because hey, it almost was mm -hmm. a couple months. That when they break them from the framework, it could cause horrible psychological damage. Yeah, I think so. Then he will. So then he will make soap. He will just spend the rest of his life making soap. Or their and memories th won't be intact. And I think that's why Simmons is so upset over Fitz blowing away Agnes. Yeah, because Agnes is no longer exists at all. Right, she's outright dead now. She's double dead. She's double she dead. And who killed her? Fitz. Yeah. Now, the whole thing is, yeah, great. Fitz goes dark side here. But that, that means he was. Th yeah, and the look on Simmons' face, because now she realizes, oh, I was wrong. Fitz was totally capable of this shit. Like, you know, it's all fake. This is a fake world. This is a fake world. It's not real. It's not real. He's not capable of killing an innocent girl. Bam. Yeah. Well, this isn't. Thing is, this isn't the Fitz we know. This is true. This is you know special CIA soap. Fitz. Um, this is this is the Fitz that grew up knowing his daddy, but, or so we okay. could assume. 
Y yes, Fitz is capable of this. But the look on his face when Gemma yelled. Yes, and that he look. looked at her. They, and they it, locked eyes just like a second. Like there, that was it. Yes. That was the moment. I don't just know if it bit. did anything because they sweep, they whisk him away. Um, I think that was the first seed of doubt. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I was surprised the photo didn't do anything. No. And the name. Well, I, guess it, I guess it's because she wasn't, like, physically there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seeing her, hearing her scream his name and all that stuff, that is probably what did it. Mm -hmm. Definitely the first seed. Not enough to prevent him from torturing Radcliffe and Daisy. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Man, uh, Radcliffe screams. That, that was not fun. Yeah. Listen to. Well, it kind of cements the whole... Everybody's terrified of him. He's the doctor. How Ward the wants doctor. to take him out. And he almost did. He almost did. So, okay. Is this Matrix rules? If you die hooked up to the framework, you're dead? Your yes. brain dies? It's Matrix yes. rules. Okay. They mentioned that before they went in. In the... Yeah. Before the, you know, the mid... The month break or whatever. So, yeah. I just had you know. to... I had to reframe. Yep. Oh boy. I don't even know where to go from here. Like where this is going to go. How the hell are they going to get out of there? Huh? We're all fucked? Yeah, they're no, all fucked. No, we're not all, no, only some of them are. I am... <clears throat> I don't want this to happen, but you know, we're, we're overdue for a character death. Like a major character death. Fitz? I, I don't want it to be not. Fitz. If it's Fitz, I'm going to be so upset. You and know what though? Not, well, we already have, this is basically going to be this is going to be our quarter season long Fitzsimmons heartbreaking moment. It's just the whole thing, the whole thing. Now, I thought Radcliffe got through to him at because you know back in the office with Madame Hydra, he says I would. You know, she's like, you'd really do anything for me? I'd cross the universe for you. I almost threw my and computer then, no, out the window. Yeah. No. Fuck no. No. And then Radcliffe no. said to her, said to him, you know, we were mates, we did this, we did... It's like, she was the love of your life. You literally crossed the universe for her. And I was like, at that point, I'm like, that had to do it. That has to lend some credit to his words because he used a phrase that only you have used. How would he know that? Because it happened. Because it happened and it was really beautiful. And so, yeah. I don't know. Unless Fitz is playing some kind of long con. Which so. that will fuck you, Fitz. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, he was, he you were gonna get married. To Fitz, you have a ring somewhere. I don't know if you still have it, but you had one. <laughs> you had one. You are gonna use it. Yeah. You are gonna shop for an apartment and go to the furniture store and have a little... Nook. You get and lost in Ikea. You know, and you were gonna get a turtle. And that, was, that was gonna be, The turtle was gonna be your baby. Anyway, um, I'm just going to mention it now because it's really, really short. But next week's episode is called No Regrets. And the synopsis is, the truth behind Fitz's turn could bring down all of S.H.I.E.L.D. In the real world? I don't know. the framework? I don't know. Uh... That is the synopsis we were given. Huh. I am sharing you the information I have. Yeah. Where's Elena? Where is she? She's outside. Is she doing anything? Is she just kind of waiting? She's outside? probably just kind of waiting. Is she waiting on, on the button? So, is that what she's, she's doing? Yeah. One last thing we didn't talk work, about. So she's going to be waiting for a yeah. while. She's going to be waiting there for a long while. Um, May tricks Mac, well, uses Mac to trick Daisy into revealing that she's a spy from the other yeah, world. Yeah, that was tough. And then Mac joins the resistance for a very good reason. Because he couldn't look his daughter in the eye. This is the very first time he couldn't do it. Because mm -hmm. um, this guy was nice to her. Yeah. More so that he's been playing along, keeping under the radar, just doing what Hydra says. Just to stay low, keep his daughter safe and everything. Today was the, you know, well, that day was the first day he actively helped them. Yeah. Do something despicable. And your daughter hates you for it, so she doesn't. Yep. It. I don't think it's that she hates him. I just think he's just disappointed, conflicted probably. now. Yeah, confliction. So, 
sad face. But if you watch the promo for next episode, there's a little more. Um, it seems that Fitz's research area has drummed up Mace's serum for Hydra. Oh, no. And May takes it. Oh, no. Oh, and then there, you just see a lovely super-powered fight between May and... Uh, well, May does not need to Mace. take it. Mm, that's okay. a good point. Now, it, this is a lovely thing that May says, and her face is just like, oh! like, you know, you just like, someone just revealed, I shit in your cereal. <gasps> kind of face. Um, and he's like, somebody's been juicing. Either that or they've made you one of us. Like, you know, meaning in humans, and her face is just pure horror, like, no! <laughs> Oh, oh, because she think. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you know, she's Hydra. They hate in humans. Mm. They're evil. All of that is true. May has never been exposed to Terrigen Mist, so we don't know. No, that would just be horrifying. Agent May with and superpowers. I, yeah. She doesn't need superpowers, but if she no. had them, you could fire all the other Shield agents, and you know that's all you needed. You want to give Steve Rogers the fight for his life, Agent May with superpowers. Yeah. Well, because Steve doesn't have superpowers, technically, so, yeah. All right, fine. You want to give Thor the fight for his life, Agent there May with go. superpowers. <laughs> no, but like, no, May could just stare at Thor and he would explode. <laughs> I just would love for them to meet because she could give him the stare and he'd probably just be like, just visibly uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He won't say anything. He won't do anything. He'll be very calm about it while freaking out on the inside. I don't like the way this woman is staring at me. I know him. He's a friend from work. Oh, God. <sighs> yeah, all I've been seeing, are pic- yeah, three, all I've been seeing are pictures of the Hulk next to a picture of Shrek wearing the same thing. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> and I have a feeling... This is where they got the idea for that outfit. I'll have to look at it. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, is there anything else to mention? <coughs> besides oh. this, I, I don't know why I like Fitz so much. Because oh, I don't know. I I don't know why I like the Fitz Simmons pair as much as I do. <clears throat> but episodes that well, fuck because, with that dynamic yeah. really fuck with me. Well, because we've been waiting for it for so long, and when it finally happened we're like yes it's happening and it doesn't suck so yeah. and and, just, you know, and they're and they're cute they're, they're just cute yeah. and they're functional and they're they were best friends first so like we already had that chemistry and so just for them to like take to the next level and actually admit the feelings that they had because Fitz had those feelings first and Gemma didn't and then she developed them over time so and they've been through a lot together literally to the ends of the universe and these aren't just like two people in love, two people in love who are partners, and they've saved the world together, that changes you. So they they have a bond that really cannot be broken. Right. So I think that's why we love Fitzsimmons so much. Yeah. Emotional journey. Mm-hmm. But I think on that note, that's our show. And that is your inspirational speech from Jacob today. Yay. I like it. We need more of those. Speaking of which, Jacob, where can they find you? You can find me here and more inspirational speeches at Jacob Salazar are on YouTube, or you can find me on Twitter, tweeting me throughout the week, throughout the life at 2 Land. That is T O N O W H E R E L E N D. Join the Nowhere Land Society. And if him doing that without getting tongue tied is an inspirational, I don't know what the hell is. Cleo, where can they find you? You can find me at Cleo Moto on Twitter, Twitch, and Pinterest. And you can go to my Tumblr, which is also Cleo Moto, where I have a couple preliminary thoughts about Batman vs. Superman. More, more to oh, follow. I've Yay. seen them. I've also seen your giant pile of notes. I have like five different <laughs> windows open at the same time with notes. I, I'm i going to write Gee. like four articles on it. Gee, it's almost as if you're very conflicted over it. It's almost as if I'm really confused. <laughs> anyway, you can find me on Twitter at Thilladrin. You can find all of us on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, Google+, MySpace, and YouTube at ASOTV Podcast. You can find... Five, blah, blah, blah. I already said that. You can follow us at those places for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows, movies, and games. Thank you all for watching. I did it. Yeah.
Congrats. Indeed. Yeah. Get a cookie.